most stunning revelation, Sherry, that I believe that you and your source, Barbara Hartwell, are responsible for, for it opening our eyes up to this truth, that it's all controlled. It was controlled by its inception, from its inception, for the purpose of undermining the credibility of everybody in that industry. That is, it was done from a programming that was done to Gunderson, to Hartwell, to Hilder, literally a disinformation uh, process of hypnosis, of mind control, of MK Ultra type programming. And that word is in Barbara Hartwell's specific statement as to what was she doing, what was the assignment that she was carrying out with Ted Gunderson from the beginning, attempting, as they were, to bring awareness to the corruption in government. It was not simply that, folks. They were on the payroll of the CIA, literally going out to create the concept that we in America now, in the alternative presses, in the alternative activist movements, the concept that there is this thing called the Illuminati, that there is this thing tied to the banks and the corruption to the intelligence agencies that they want us and wanted us to believe that there is this official malfeasance that's ongoing. And that's the biggest issue that we have to deal with right now. And that's why literally what Sherry's saying, we're dropping out. You know, folks, you've been asking me, and a lot of you have been writing in, saying, Len, you know, you're focusing on all this negativity when there's so much positivity that you might want to be focusing better on. And I have, I've shared with those folks, you know, you have to also open up to the fact that there's genocide and there's the people, the children particularly, who need us. And I wrote in my last uh, letter in the newsletter, the Healthy World Store.com newsletter that you can get for free, sign up for free and, and get the newsletters, that where do we draw the line? Do we draw the line and say we should stop at vaccinations and the mercury intoxications? And if we're going to involve ourselves with that negativity to save lives, shall we not also go involved to what is programming us to receive vaccinations, to receive the medical doctors and the whole concept of poisonous medicine instead of natural healing? So where do you draw the line? It's, it's a very fine line, and I've, I've argued that position. I've held that position. And for, for me, folks, this conference was a wonderful changing point because I really got to see what the vast majority of people believe in their heads and they really want to stick to is that this concept of de degrading each other regardless of whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, that the fact is that people don't want to hear personal stories. They don't want to engage themselves in taking a very serious subject, for example, child trafficking, and degrade it to the level that Anthony Hilder did with the production of that video that abuses the honorable Sherry Kane in the most sexually demeaning ways, and that they didn't want to hear that. Can I, can I uh, also, uh, I really want to point out, because this is my issue, and I've been, you know, dealing with this for a really long time, as a lot of women have, especially if you have a voice and you want to be heard and you are a leader of some sort. It's hard in this world. We live in a misogynist world. We live in a misogynist world. The world is definitely, you know, geared toward the male as a superior race. And it's all, we've all been lied to. This whole division between man and woman, we've all been lied to. And it's really coming, it comes from the Bible in a lot of ways. And I know that, you know, and that's why Len and I have a little debate on Paul in the Bible because, uh, if you know, if you interpret the words that he says about women not being, uh, not that sh they shouldn't be speaking in the church unless they're spoken to, because at the time women were not allowed to be educated at that time period. So you know, anything that would come out of their mouth, it was feared that it would be something that was stupid. And this was, this was all done to create the division, because really in reality, there there is no 
you know, just because you're a woman does not, or a man does not make you smarter than another gender. It's really an individual thing. And we know that people we meet all the time, there's smart women, there's smart men, it has nothing to do with their gender. So this video that Hilder, Anthony Hilder circulated was in, in his uh, defense of me saying that, you know, basically you're hanging out with people who protect child, uh, uh, who protect um, pedophiles, pedophiles and, child and people who engage in child sex trafficking. You are protecting these people. You're hanging out with Satanists and, or people that engage in people who uh, engage with people that um, yeah, participate in satanic rituals. And, and, and this is it. I mean, and this was my argument with him and his only defense was a video that he circulated that really tried to demean me as a woman, that put me on a rating system. Now, here's a guy that's so embarrassed to be bald that he wears a beetle toupee. He's about, you know, he's an old man wearing a beetle toupee. And basically, he's going around rating women, not only me, but another woman in the video he also talked about, and he, he mentioned the size of her breasts. Now, this was his response. Now, I called him, up, called him on that while we were in the speaker debate at the conspiracy conference. I called him on that, and I said to him, Anthony, I said, you are a sexist. And his response was, yes, I am a sexist. And so he admits it. He admits it, and he's proud of it. And frankly, folks, many of you out there listening may not even want to hear this, because that was the consensus. The general consensus of the audience was that they did not want to engage in this kind of a debate. And sadly and sickly, this is the crux of that most important issue. Not as, it's not just the sexist and the divisiveness of demeaning the the discussion, lowering it into the trash bin of a sexist issue, coming from attempting to expose those who have infiltrated our minds, who have literally laid the groundwork for us to believe what we believe about everything from the Illuminati to the Rothschilds to the Rockefellers on down, we believe because of the Hilders and the Gundersons and the Horowitzes of the world who believed in things like that we've been talking about and reading about and Anthony Hilder's been publishing. The new information is that they were programmed and they have been programmed. They may probably have even forgotten the fact that they've been programmed and they're still out there engaging the program. But the problem is, as a, as a scientist, as a researcher, it doesn't work for me to hear, for example, Hilder or Gunderson or Truat out there say, saying that their sources are anonymous, that they don't have any convictions that they have no convictions for the pedophiles and the sex traffickers, and ultimately that this concept of them being a leader in the field with no solutions, no remedies. I'll give you a, a, another great example. I set about in 1993 to advance the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola. I did not have an intention at that point to deal with the issues of vaccination toxicity. At the time, I was actually promoting vaccines for healthcare professionals as a public health professional myself. It wasn't until I came out with a documented, referenced, sourced intelligence, scientifically peer-reviewed references that cited those references, and then based on that, I determined that vaccinations were horrible, genocidal. And from that effort, that one letter at a time, one article at a time, one radio show at a time, one television appearance at a time, I was largely responsible for what you currently witness is the anti-vaccination movement in America. I give total credit and thanks to Waleen James and Greg Cassell's mother, she was there before I was. She started the ball rolling. Mayor Eisenstein, the wonderful doctor from the Chicago area, he's been there from the very beginning. But when I came into it, I made a 
huge difference because I set my heart, my mind, and my work, and my money to making that happen. Now today, we have millions of families who have been saved, spared because of those efforts. And yet I look now back at the history of Gunderson, whose specific expertise evolved from his uh, intelligence gathering in the FBI of the child trafficking and the satanic networks. And what does he have as his record? Do we have any less children disappearing? No. Do we have any more surveillance and oversight or investigations by the FBI? No. Do we have any more expertise and reference sources that say this is horrible, this is how it's operating, and these are the people behind it? No, we don't. What we have is Ted Gunderson, who advances the world-leading expert, he says, on child trafficking and the Church of Satan, and Michael Aquino as Doug Millar. And if you read any of Doug Millar's works, you realize that they're not credible. They don't even read well. There's such horrible grammar and spelling and mistakes in the layout that it discredits not only Millar, it discredits Gunderson, it discredits the whole concept that we've got a problem with this issue of the search of Satan and child trafficking. Now, sadly and sickly, that is precisely an MK Ultra operation. Now, I know we've got, uh, Sherry, I think you published it a very uh, last couple of Days, I think it is, up on the Internet now. There's a PDF file that Gunderson laid out in April, not just this past April, regarding a court case where he tells you right from the, the, from the get-go that he was heavily involved in MK Ultra And, co- and also uh, COINTELPRO the and Intel the CIA. And his assignment, again, was to do exactly what we're experiencing, the attacks against us and literally the mind control of we the people. He tells you that that was his operation. And then, of course, a great question is, how can a man go for all of these years in the Federal Bureau of Investigation, be a top star overseeing 700 employees, having the inside scoop on all of the the judges and the prosecutors and the attorneys dealing with child trafficking and satanic sex rituals through the Church of Satan, when he's, number one, he's in married or is engaged to be married or is in, uh, evolving to the point where he's going to be married ultimately to Anton LaVey's uh, ex-wife, Diana Rively, and also, very importantly, where did he suddenly make the transition from becoming a star FBI retiree to blaming the FBI for engaging in cover-up but yet not having any any reference sources for his allegations. And when it comes to pointing the finger at Michael Aquino, who works with Gunderson, who is on the show with Gunderson on Geraldo Rivera, and it's a, a, it's a shocking video that's on YouTube. Just uh, do the search on Gunderson and, and Aquino and Geraldo Rivera, child sex trafficking. It'll come up for you. You can view the whole thing, and you can see... This clown-looking character, Michael Aquino from the Church of Satan, who's a top MK Ultra official for the United States federal government, and you see Ted Gunderson playing good cop, bad cop on that video with Geraldo. And by the way, Geraldo Rivera has a hideous history of covering up so much, it's disgusting. From the first... uh, the first report that made him famous was the Willowbrook State School of Mentally Retarded Children on Staten Island that were sick from the AIDS tests, the hepatitis B vaccines that they were administering to the United States Army's contract with the New York University Medical Center, injecting these children with the Litton Bionetics supplied chimpanzees that were used to produce those hideously contaminated vaccines. It comes to find out that the Michael Aquino's home base was the Presidio, where Lytton Bionetics also operated. Child abuse was ongoing there. All of this was in Gunderson's domain to be able to articulate, investigate, reference, and he didn't. And so the question becomes, for me, the audience, do they really want to hear that they're heroes, that the people that they have bought into 
debating these critical issues whereby we might be able to see and realize that we're all brainwashed to the point of dysfunction and we're not getting solutions to our most important problems. All we've got is confusion and stupid, degraded argument dealing with, I mean, root chakra sexuality. How high is Sherry Kane rated on a scale of 1 to 10, according to Anthony Hilder? 